Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today we're going to talk about automatically incrementing your build number. Previously I was using just a string that I had in a constants file and every time I built I would increment that. And whenever I submitted to the App Store I would update the App Store build and the Android build to be whatever that number said. And that left a lot of room for error. Sometimes they would be mismatched. So what I did was implement this, what I'm about to show you today, to make it all much easier. Let's jump in. First of all, if you don't have the project settings menu, you can go to edit project settings to get this menu. We're going to be looking under the player option. Player other settings is where we'll typically find the build numbers. Here for the standalone one, the only one that's there is the build under Mac App Store options. Uh, since I'm not on a Mac, we will be including the Windows build to increment this instead of just the Mac version since we won't see anything change if I don't do that. So what I'm going to do is create a text mesh pro object on a canvas. I'm going to put build colon question mark question mark just so that way we see that it does change based on whatever our script is going to do. We'll attach a script called build displayer to it. We'll create that new script and we'll require text mesh pro UGUI component and assign that on awake so we have the reference there without having to assign it in the inspector. And then on start, we will set the text to be build colon application dot version dot build number. Just so that we see this work, I'll add private string build number, set that to one. And when we click play in the Unity editor, we'll see that build becomes 0.1.1. That's great, but this is totally disconnected from reality, right? It's not tied to my player settings. It doesn't automatically increment. This is what I did previously in Llama Survival for a long time, and it really, it's, there's a better way, and we're going to show that now. Let's automatically increment our build. That's the first thing. So that way our build number actually represents what build number it is instead of manually having to do it every time. So we'll create a new folder called editor. This is a special folder that Unity just understands should not be included in a build and is only used in the Unity editor. In there, we can safely use classes from the Unity editor namespace. So we'll create a new one called build incrementer here, and we'll make it implement the i preprocess build with report interface here that gives us two things one is a callback order and one is a do preprocess build so this is a build preprocessor before the build runs we can have as many of these as we want and we can order them by the callback order so the lower numbers go first higher numbers go later. So this one, uh, we only have one, so we'll put a one here, makes sense. That way if you have more preprocessors, you can figure out which one should execute in what order and set them, set this value accordingly. In do preprocess build, that's where we will do the preprocess build. <laughs> makes sense, right? We can access the player settings for each different target platform. We'll be using the macOS build number here just because it's the standalone version, and I don't want to have to run an emulator or something to show you this build number change. Most of these player settings build numbers are actually strings, so that's kind of weird. Uh, so what we'll end up doing, actually Android here is an integer, They're, almost all the rest of them are strings. I think the Windows Store applications are an actual system dot version, so that one's nice. But we have to deal, deal with a string on the rest of them. So we'll make this function called increment build number, which will take a string, the build number that Unity provides us here, we will try to parse that into an integer and we will return as a string whatever number we got plus one. When you do int.tryParse, if it fails, it still outputs a zero into that integer we put there, the output build number. So it's still safe there that we will always have at least a one as our build number. And then with how we're going to write this function, it will always be a valid number after that, unless maybe you change it manually into be an invalid number and that will reset the build counter. So what we'll do here is add a switch on the report summary platform. And this way for each platform, we will have a different build number because that makes sense, right? Having a build number the same across different platforms doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can do that still. So you could skip this whole switch thing if you're building, if you want all of your games to have the same build number, skip straight to 
the end basically where we're just going to increment the build number and apply it to all of the different platforms. I'm going to go through each of the supported platforms here. That's standalone Windows, OS X, iOS, Android, PS4, Xbox One, Windows Store, and Switch and TV OS. Since those are the currently supported platforms on Unity 2019, Unity 2020, and 2021, as of the time I'm making this video, which is beginning of 2021, just so you can see for whichever platform you're using, you can use this particular case. So for most of them, we're going to just pass in the build number or app version for that platform into increment build number and assign the build number to be the return value of that. The oddball cases are Android, which is an integer, so we can just increment that like any other integer, and the Windows Store, which uses the system.version, so we can increment the build number specifically there, which is pretty nice. I've never done anything with Switch before, so I have the display version and release version. I don't know which one matters to increment or makes sense to increment for this version. So I'm going to use the display version. I'll increment them both, but I, I honestly don't know the, which one is the one that should be used. And the Unity documentation is not good for the switch. Once we've completed all of these cases, we know that whenever we run a build, our build number will increment for that particular platform. And we can check that out in a player settings. We'll see it go from one to two, two to three etc. each time we build that particular platform. That's useful, but there's a problem there that we cannot access this build number in our game. This player settings class is only available in the Unity editor namespace, so that's not particularly helpful if we want to show that in our game for support or get that in our game for support purposes or just informational display for our users. If you don't already have a resources directory, create one now. We're going to use it to store the build number so we can load it at runtime. How do we get that build number into our game? What we'll do is create a new scriptable object called build scriptable object, make that extend scriptable object class, and we'll just make it have one field public string build number. Once we have that, we'll come back to the build incrementer class, since this is where the build number is incremented. We'll create a new build scriptable object instance whenever we pre-process the build. And based on the platform, we will assign the build number to the incremented build number. So after we've incremented the build number, we'll assign build scriptable objects build number to be the platform build number. Then we'll save it to the resources folder so it's available in our build and we can fetch that dynamically without having to have any scene references to this scriptable object since it will change. To do that, we'll do asset database delete asset, and we'll pass in the path to the resources folder and the build scriptable object. For your game, you might consider putting this path to a string constant somewhere so you can reference it and only have it in one place and not have to change it in multiple places later. Then we will do asset database create asset at the same path with the build scriptable object as the first argument, saying that we will want to save this build scriptable object as an asset at this path. Then we say asset dat database.save assets to make sure that Unity has actually done that save. Now we have a build scriptable object that gets placed into the resources folder automatically with a new build number every time we build. We just need to fetch that in our game. So let's go back to build this player and we'll do a resources.load async to asynchronously try to load from the resources folder the build asset. We'll say that it's the build scriptable object type to make sure that's fetching the only what we want. And on whenever this resource request is completed, we will set the text to be the build number from the build scriptable object. So let's remove the on start, let's remove the string class member variable, and let's load the asset from the async operation, which is a resource request. So we do that by casting object, the parameter that we got to a resource request, get the asset from there, and tell Unity that this is a build scriptable object asset, assign that to build scriptable object. If it's null, let's log an error so that way we know, hey, something is wrong, our build is not correct, we're missing this information, and we cannot correctly display the build number. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and set the text to be the build number. Now if we run a build, we'll see that the build asset is generated in the resources folder. And when I click play, we'll get the build text to be correctly set to 0.1.2. If I build and run this game, we'll see it launches with the build being 0.1.3 because 
we built again so the build number got incremented. That's how easy it is to automatically increment your build and make sure you get that build number into your game so you can use it for whatever reason you need. Show it to your users, get back analytics, send it in bug reports, make sure they're on the latest version. There are so many use cases for this. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. I know it was a huge help for me when I first implemented this in Llama Survival. If it's helped you in your project, if you have any questions, or if you have a suggestion for a topic that you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.